Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. By the time you listen to this, we will be well into 2024, but we're recording in the first week of January. So I can still say happy new year. And no matter what time it is in January, February, March, we're still in the throes of a new year, um, focusing on new goals and sometimes even reevaluating those goals. And you know, I'm all about trying to grow your business or not even trying, but doing it, actually doing it, growing your business without social media. And I believe it is 100% possible with a few strategies that are very powerful and can get you more visibility with a lot less stress, a lot less anxiety, and a lot fewer distractions. One of those methods is being a podcast guest. And today I am bringing on a very special guest from all the way across the world to share with you how podcast guesting can be key or a key component of your marketing strategy and why it is so important. And I can share that I have gotten clients from being a guest on other people's podcast. So if you're doubting that this works, I can assure you that it does. Without further ado, no, Amy Barris, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me today, Robin, and happy new year to you too. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled you're here. You and I connected on LinkedIn, which I like to say LinkedIn isn't really social media because it is such a business platform, but it also has search engine optimization opportunities that no other platform has because you can use it for long form content. You can use it for short form content. You can really build relationships there. And it's not as spammy. Yeah, sometimes we get those DMs that are like, oh, I do this. You want to work with me? But For the most part, I think it's less spammy, less um, stressful than other social media platforms. So that's where we met. And I am so happy that you're here. And I can't wait for you to share with the listeners something that I'm passionate about. And that is how podcast guesting is an integral part of our marketing strategy. But before we dive into that, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your background and how you got to where you are today? Of course, yes. So I live in Cyprus, Cyprus, Europe. It's a small Mediterranean island. I was born and raised in Hungary and I moved to Cyprus about 13 years ago. So it was it's a long time. And yeah, it, it's a very interesting story how I ended up in the podcasting world because um, from 2007 until 2020, I had nothing to do with podcasts. So I was working in the online travel industry and... I was doing, yes, I know, social media marketing, <laughs> content creation, and um, yeah, I loved it. It was really interesting. Blog, I was a blog writer as well, and it was a fascinating job, but unfortunately, COVID hit and the travel industry collapsed. So the business uh, that we had with my husband stopped completely. So we had to figure out something to pivot, to start a new business, and That's when we came up with the idea of starting a podcast booking agency. And that's how Podcast Connections was born in 2020, March 2020. That was the short, (laughs) our story in a nutshell, basically. Yeah. And I love it that you were able to pivot. And I think a lot of times when we're in the online space, and, and in the content creation space, it's kind of easy to pivot into another space. And really, when you're pitching podcast guests to podcast hosts, you are creating content, but you're cre- and you're marketing. Like you are actually using influence and public relations skills to demonstrate expertise of the people that hire you to pitch them. So I think it's a fabulous way to have really just kept the momentum, but transferring the ideations and the actual work. So congratulations on that. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. And now it's four, now you're four years in. So now you are full on in the podcast industry. 
Yeah, completely, 100%. I love it. I enjoy it. And I met so many wonderful people worldwide that I'm just so thankful. And I couldn't do that without COVID. And I couldn't do that without without being in this industry. I mean, this is a completely whole new world to me, but I enjoy it. And it's really exciting. Yeah, that's great. So let's dive in. How, from your perspective, how does podcast guesting impact your overall marketing strategy? It's a new marketing strategy. It's still a new one, like compared to like like a Facebook or or Instagram marketing strategy. So it's a long term marketing strategy for sure. I mean, it won't bring you results, you know, in twenty four hours. This is not an advertisement or anything like that. You really need to work and and get yourself out there and do those interviews and and repurpose those interviews and share those interviews in order to 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 get this marketing strategy work but once you do it you create evergreen content which is like incredible i mean once you have a podcast interview you can cut it up you can you can do whatever you want with it uh, okay on a side note you need the permission from the podcast host that's an important yes. one but you can you can use it forever basically and you can make um, videos, quotes, audiograms, videograms, so that so m- many opportunities are lying in there. And it's just wonderful because creating content is a lot of work. If you, you know, writing a blog or uh, publishing a LinkedIn newsletter or a LinkedIn article, it's it's a lot of work. But once you have an interview, I mean, and you have a transcript, and now with ChatGPT, you can just convert that transcript into a blog post, into a LinkedIn newsletter, into a LinkedIn article, a LinkedIn post. So there are endless possibilities to use your content. And I think that's the biggest power because if I'm just thinking about Facebook or the other social media platforms, you don't really have that kind of option because this is just so unique. And now it's audio, it's video, and people love like people are more interested in watching things. I mean, before, like a couple of years ago, podcasts were only audio Mm -hmm. and it can be a bit boring when you just listen to something. But then once you get the visuals in, I mean, that makes things even more more interesting and fascinating. Yeah, and you make a good point because repurposing is key. And now because of video, you have the video snippets, which are out there online that you can share, but you can also a lot of hosts are now using YouTube. So you can increase your search engine optimization capabilities just because someone else is sharing you on all of these different platforms. And, you know, Google, YouTube, Pinterest, these are all search engines. So the more your name is out there from other people's platforms, the more likely it is that your soulmate people will actually find you. Um, So Yes. The other thing I want to emphasize too, is that it is a long game. So, yeah. But what's key about that is that when you put up a social media post, it lasts maybe 18 hours max. When you are a guest on a podcast, this is forever until the podcast is no longer in existence. And a lot of times, even when people have paused their podcast or have decided to shift gears and no longer podcast, they will still have that podcast living out there online. So I think that's really important to note that if you're looking for sustainable marketing strategies, this is one of those that you can employ. Absolutely. hundred percent. I agree with you, Robin. I mean, it's just so important. Plus you're building your authority and your brand at the same time. And once someone just, you know, put your name into Google, just type your name or Google you, that all your interviews will come up on YouTube and, and every single platform it was shared, like on iTunes, YouTube, and um, Spotify, any like everywhere, basically. So it's like your, your credibility and authority just just build up. And I remember I had a couple of discovery calls with people. They got in touch with me through my website and they told me, I asked them, how did you find me? Oh, no, no, like my VA listened to your interview or I listened to your interview. Someone did that. So it definitely has a power. And as you said at the beginning of our conversation that I was, I went on interviews and I was hired on the spot, like because the host wanted to work with me, which was amazing. And it's like, oh, I want to work with you. And so that was that gave me a push for sure. And um, it helped me to 
just thrive because it's yeah, it's a good feeling when someone likes what you're saying and you, what you share and your knowledge you share on podcasts as well. Yes. And when you talk about authority, what's really key and how this really elevates you as an expert is the fact that trust determines buying practices. And because of that, the host is trusting you to come on their show and provide value. And so if they trust you, their listeners are automatically going to trust you. So you have the opportunity to increase the number of people in your community that are already warm because they're trusting you based on the fact that someone else trusted you. Absolutely. It's all about trust. And once you share your story and once you are open and vulnerable, you know, with your story and, you know, you and you won't always tell you about just the success you got, because we all have ups and downs and ebb and flow. It it doesn't always 100 percent and brilliant and, and the life of an entrepreneur. And that also gives like you. People will look at you as like a real person, not some some someone from a fantasy as like, oh, that's like a successful entrepreneur and that's like did everything well in life. No, they didn't. I mean, we all have our ups and downs, but that just brings us to another level and, and people will trust us and look at us like someone who can they trust. And mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so now we've talked about the benefits when po being a podcast guest is part of your marketing strategy. Right. Let's talk about how to be a good guest. And listeners, I want to emphasize to go to the show notes because I am going to link in the show notes additional episodes that we have done over the past four years related to being a podcast guest or using podcasting in your marketing strategies, as well as how to start a podcast, which was the most recent one we did with Ren Robbins in, I guess, November or December of 2023. So very recent. But um, let's talk about how to be a good guest. And yes, this is a topic we're revisiting, but it's very important to know how to be a good guest if you want host to accept you onto their show. Yeah, so true. Um, first of all, do your research. Listen to those uh, podcasts and listen to those interviews. Like today I came on your show and, you know, I, I already listened to a couple of interviews before, but today I, I wanted to be in the vibe. So I listened to your very last, in, last interview with a Danish lady and that was fabulous. I loved it about <laughs> happiness and everything. And it was like, wow, this is so amazing. So yeah, take your time and listen to a couple of previous interviews because that will... You, you get a feel for the host's vibe and the topics that are, you know, typically covered. And it's really important. Mm -hmm. And I, I should advise to everyone who want to be a great guest, for sure. And uh, the other thing, second, it come prepared. Uh, don't wing it. Never wing it. I mean, it's like, uh, it doesn't really matter how many interviews did in the past. Do your research, come, pre come prepared and have a clear understanding of what you want to talk about. Uh, we always have our topics, talking points, run through them, go through them every single time. I know because like most of the I mean, like uh, podcast I'm on, uh, they are free flow, but you still need to have a kind of structure to go through when you when you are a guest. So th uh, that's also important. And so you look prepared and you look professional and not just someone who's just winging it. And yeah, <laughs> that's not advisable. Then try to be engaging, speak clearly and with enthusiasm. Don't be so stiff. I mean, this is a conversation between two people. It's like you're sitting down and you're just having a coffee or having a lunch or something. And you just, you know, you're just conversing. You're just having a great conversation and try to, yeah, try to be in tune with the host. I think that's really important. And be respectful. Be respectful with the host time and the podcast. I heard a couple of horror stories about being get, that a guest used the podcast as an advertisement for their book, for their service, for their product, for everything. And they couldn't just stop talking about, you know, about that part. But, you know, podcasts are a great source of knowledge and and I think that's the most important part. You share knowledge, you share your story. And it's not a place. It, it's a place for advertisement, usually at the end but, of the interview. But um, this is not the main focus. That's not why we are having podcasts in the world. We're sharing knowledge. And that's, that's the most important part. Yeah. 
and um, never ever forget to promote the episode because I know some people do and I just don't understand why they they don't promote it. I mean, this is a win-win situation for both of us, for you, for me, and for for example, I'm I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. We mentioned that before that you are on LinkedIn too, and um, like if I share this interview, I mean, my followers you know, will be happy, and because they will get to know your show, and because that's an amazing show, there's so much knowledge covered. Then I my followers like like this is an exchange of of knowledges again. Like people, we get to know each other and we're building a bigger network by connecting through our interview. So I think that's also important. And don't forget to follow up with the host. Just send a thank you note by email. Just say thank you. I mean, this is not a huge thing after your interview. And uh, it just it's it means so much to people because I know hosts are busy people. They spend so much time, money, energy on creating these episodes and editing them and doing this, doing that. And it's a lot of work uh, organizing the interviews and getting the the guest booked. So just just say thank you and try to network with the host. You never know. I mean, where you end up. I mean. You can be on each other's masterminds or, you know, whatever. Like you can you can have a joint venture together in the future. There are endless possibilities. And many people don't use this. And I, I don't understand why, because it, I think it's really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to interject here because from the host perspective, everything you said is spot on. I would add that if you want to be a guest, be sure you listen to the podcast before you pitch and the and be sure that you know what the host process is for reviewing pitches. I yes. don't review email pitches and I get email pitches every single day, but on the website is our application process. In the description of the show is the information on how to apply, the link, everything is there. And I still get email pitches every single day. That takes time to respond because I don't want to be rude and just not respond, but save the host time because if you annoy them, they're not going to want to have you on their show because you haven't followed the process. And that kind of is an indication to them that, well, now you haven't followed their process from the beginning. So will you follow the other processes related to this show? Will you commit to being a good guest? So something to think about there. So the reviews, follow the application process, as you said, no, I mean, the most important thing is to know the show. I get yeah. so many pitches saying, oh, this so this person would be a great guest. And their topic is nothing that we discuss on the show or that would be a good fit for our listeners. So be mindful of that. Again, it goes back to what you said, Noemi, about not wasting the host's time. And I think the, you know, be on time. Again, respectful of time. Time is so important, right? And that thank you note, when I get a thank you note, it just warms my heart that people appreciated the opportunity to be on the show. I think that's so important. And then, like you said, it's an opportunity to build relationships. And there's so many people, and you said this, you get to meet so many wonderful people by doing the work you're doing. You're getting to meet the host, you're getting to meet the clients. And it's almost, I don't know, it's just so wonderful almost magical, right? We have these relationships that you get to build. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I treasure the guests that I've had and the the relationships I've been able to build. And I think it's really important to recognize that and be mindful and respectful and courteous when you go through this process. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And you just what you just said about the pitches, yes, try to follow the process I mean there are also forms to submit or emails to send or something and yeah just have to fill out everything as they ask you to do because that's their you know that's their system that's how they operate and be respectful with that too it's it's important and if they want to fill out if they just want you three topics you don't give them ten just three and if they want like a you know like a short bio you don't like you don't have to copy and paste two pages there because they don't need that they just wanted like a 50 or 100 word bio so yeah we look up I mean, just have to be a bit yeah respectful with those things as well um and mindful too 
Yeah. And I love that you added no advertisement. Like what we're, when you're a podcast guest, one of the most important things to remember is that you're there to serve. You're there to provide information and value to the host and to her or his listeners. And it's not about selling yourself because if you think about it, marketing isn't necessarily about selling yourself. It's about building relationships and <laughs> communicating and differentiating yourself. So since this host is already trusting you to bring value to her or him or, or the listeners, it's really important to emphasize value, 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 not selling, selling, selling. Now it's okay to give examples. It's okay to incorporate your story. And certainly at the end, most of the time, the host is going to say, where can the people find you? And if you have an email list and you want to promote a download or something, it's okay to do that if they ask you to, but if they don't ask you to, eh. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. You know, I mean, for me, I always want to do that because I want to promote the guest, but not everybody is like that. Okay, let's shift gears for just a second. The third thing that I want to ask you about is, are there key things that you always incorporate in a pitch? Yes, of course, <laughs> there are a couple of those. Uh, first of all, we always incorporate uh, that we, for example, listen to an episode and what we liked about it. Yeah, I think that gives an idea of those that like they didn't just, you know, pitch someone to me, but they they took the time. They just took the time. And it, it's it, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. And plus, you personalize your pitch in this way. So it's not just like a generic something like, like OK, like I have a client or I am a guest and like I want to be a guest on your show. It's like, OK, that's fine. You probably get like hundreds of those like every week. Uh, so try to stand out from the crowd as again. To take your time, listen to those interviews and tell the host why you liked it. I mean, everyone likes to know what they liked about their episodes. I mean, everyone loves that. It's like if you you're like thankful or grateful for something that like I really love this part. And I think it was amazing. It's like you, you put a smile on someone else's face. They're not going to be like sad or something because you said that. So I think that's a good start then uh, obviously you will include a bio, like a short bio. I'm not talking about because a pitch has to be short and sweet. It shouldn't be like, yeah, like very, very long and just scrolling and scrolling through someone's life from, you know, from university until, until they reach that point in their life right now. So short and sweet, try to include everything, but it has to be compact. So yeah, it host will read like a lot and a lot of bios in there during a day and during a week so yeah be mindful and also include um social media links um, most of the hosts are interested in that your website also important what we do we always we always give like a sample interview what they did maybe one of the most successful ones and just include that just a link a url and people can check you out or what i did for example for myself because i do a lot of podcast guesting i created a spotify list which is public and i added um, um all of my podcast interviews there so people can just click on it and they can just listen to it so in that way or you can have a media uh, page on your website and you can showcase one of your, a couple of your, you know, most important or most valuable conversations. And you can uh, share that link with the host. And what else? Um, these are the most important things that we usually include in a pitch, obviously. So like personalized bio. Oh, yes. And let's not forget about the most important part, uh, topics and talking points that align with the show that has to do something with the show. That's really, really important. So try to, again, listen to those episodes, maybe one or two and yeah, figure it out. What's the best? What are the best topics and talking points that align with the show's topic? Excellent. Absolutely excellent. The only thing that I would add to that is, and it's not even adding, it's emphasizing, again, appreciating their time or respecting their time yeah. and making it easy. If I have to go and click multiple places to find you or to find yeah. information about you, 
I'm probably not going to do that and I'm not going to get the opportunity to know everything about you. So if there is a form to fill out, all of that information will be on the on the yeah. form, which makes it really simple. So include all those details. And then the other thing is that, you know, if you have a website, make sure that's in the pitch because I don't want to have to go and do a Google search to try to find you yeah. because if your SEO isn't up to speed, then I'm not going to be able to find you in a relatively quick manner. And then the other thing I wanted to emphasize is you, you mentioned the media page. First of all, I love the Spotify playlist idea. That's excellent. And I think I'm going to copy that. <laughs> Great <laughs> idea. But the media page is also important because it, yeah. it helps with search engine optimization. So you know that this podcast that you're guesting on has is reputable. Their yeah. website or their their podcast website is reputable. So it is safe to use that backlink on your website. So that helps you with your SEO as well. And then people will, it just makes it easier for people to find you. So another thing to emphasize. Um, no, Amy, this has been fabulous. You gave <laughs> so much value here today. Thank you. You're very welcome. I am. Yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, you're so you're so pretty. You're such a light. You smile, your smile, everything. I can tell you're passionate about what you do and you're very good at it. So thank you. And will you please tell the listeners where they can find you, connect with you, maybe even hire you? Yes, <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> uh, it's we have a website and it's called Podcast Connections plural.co, not com, but dot co. And you will find us there and you can get in touch with us. And I'm also on LinkedIn most of the time. And if you type my name in Noemi Perez, I'm there and you can get in touch with me and we can have a chat. Awesome. And I will put all those links in the show notes so that people can find you readily. And listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, will you do me a solid and leave a rating and review? I would be so grateful because that is how I continue to get great guests like Noemi. And we continue to grow and be able to spread, you know, positive vibes, energy, and light into the world. So if you would be so kind, that would be awesome. And if you know someone who is trying to grow a business and is overwhelmed by social media, this is a great way for them to improve their marketing strategies and incorporate podcast guesting in that. So please share this episode with them as well. And don't forget to subscribe because so that you never miss any of this value. All right, everyone, thanks so much for being here and I will see you next time.